Time now for the Toyota game summary, a game dominated by the Aggies of Utah State. 35 to nothing as we get ready for the fourth quarter. The lack of efficiency on third down for Wyoming has certainly been an issue today. 49 plays for Wyoming, a total of 120 yards. Wick getting out to the 30 yard line on the second down carry. Third and five coming up. Take Lover right with a tackle. It's been outstanding today, number four. I'll tell you what, he's, you know, when you take a guy that's your starting corner, they're a lot like receivers. They usually get attitudes when you want to move them, position, change yeah. them around. But he's made the most of coming inside, playing that nickel spot, using his physicality and ability to run down and make tackles. Hard to complain, though, with the defense playing so well. I mean, you just want to be part of the party. This might be one of the better executed plays today for Wyoming. A 10-yard gain on the pass out to Wick. Fresh set of downs is Cameron Sanders made the stop, 5'11 senior. And I mean, they brought full pressure from this side. Everybody coming to throw the slip screen. Great job blocking out front. That play looked like it was going to go for about 30. But that just shows you the team speed of the Aggies when they're able to recover and hold it to a 10-yard gain. It did move the sticks, though. Last time Utah State delivered back-to-back -back shutouts, 1964. I thought it was going to be made by Robert Huron, but good defense by the Aggies. Brian Sweet, 13 minutes, 54 seconds away from a Utah State defense doing something it hasn't done in nearly 50 years. See the corner out, and this is a dangerous throw there. You've got triple coverage in there. And, and right now, Brett Smith is having a hard time deciphering what's happening to him in front. But that 1964 team, was that, was Merlin Olsen on that team possibly? He's, uh, he's out two years, graduated 62, huh? Apparently there was some talent left over. There was. Second down and 10. That was intended for Rufran. And that was very good coverage by Quentin Bird. Got there right as the ball did. Boy, they are, they are dialed in right now. They're completely dialed in. I mean, that's the difference between a, an eight-win team, an eight-win team, and, and a team that's got five wins right now. They're, they're dialed in defensively, making every play, making it tough for a great quarterback who's looking very average today. 13 of 25, one interception, 92 yards for Brett Smith. Going deep. Has a man wide open, Rufran, inside the five. Touchdown, Wyoming. The streak's alive for Brett Smith. 60-yard scoring play for the Cowboys. And so much for history dating back to 1964 as the bid for the shutout comes to an end. Something broke down defensively in that secondary. Here they caught, caught. One of the safeties looking in the backfield right here. Slams on his brakes. Ruffin gave him a little nod. Cameron Sanders getting bit on the first move. Right, Ruffin gave him a little nod like he was going to run the in route and just continued up the field. Eighth touchdown reception of this season by Dominic Ruffin and for Brett Smith, his 29th touchdown pass. It covers 60 yards in Logan. You see Brett Smith right there saying, good job, guys, as they put it all together on that 60-yard scoring play, our GMC scoring summary. 75-yard drive, six plays capped off by the 60-yard touchdown pass, Smith to Rufran. 35-7, Utah State leading the Wyoming Cowboys. Brett Smith, 76 career touchdown passes, first all time in a Wyoming history by a wide, wide margin. Take Lover right, and also number 17. Take Lover right. Jeremy Morris. Back deep to receive, along with Jeremy Morris. The ball to come out to the 25-yard line. Mountain West fans in the Rocky Mountain region. Root Sports has Mountain West basketball coming up later today. Tune in at 4 p.m. as New Mexico State takes on Colorado State. 
catch Mountain West basketball all season long right here on Root Sports. 13-38, remaining in the fourth quarter here at Merlin Olsen Field on the campus of Utah State University. Aggies on their way, barring a collapse of epic proportions to the Mountain West Conference Championship game on December 7th. In the face Fresno State, Kennedy Williams, number 30, the ball carrier. Jordan Stanton with the stop for Wyoming. Kennedy Williams, a six foot, check it a 5'8", 160 freshman out of Valley High School in Las Vegas. Tell you, Jordan Stanton has put together a nice year for himself. 120 plus tackles, a couple sacks, interception. Two, now two interceptions on the year. And the INT earlier in this game when Wyoming was still in it. Garretson tucks it away. It's out near the 30 yard line. Lucas Waka with the tackle for the Cowboys. Well, to be determined of the teams that are bowl eligible in the Mountain West Conference. Of course, the premier stop for the conference champion after the uh, conference title game will be the Las Vegas Bull taking on a representative from the Pac-12, but the rest all to be determined and figured out. So we look forward to seeing how it all falls in place for the Mountain West Conference. Joey Martino. That was the 14th carry for Joey. First down on that play. Well, that's a good cut, cut back, good vision, and gets just enough before he gets tripped up by Blair Burns with an assist from Marquestan Huff. So DiMartino is 61 yards. He's now at 973 on the season. Looking to get to 1,000. Garrettson looking for Van Leeuwen and broken up by Blair Burns. Near the 23 yard line. The defense by Burns. I think he might have bumped him a little bit early. Ball was underthrown. So on these, you want to get back and get that ball up early. He holds it just a second too long. But watch the contact right there with the shove. Burns just a fraction early, but you're not always going to get that call. Second down and 10. I appreciate you keeping it as objective as you could as the ex quarterback. E. Martino, big hole up the middle. Has a blocker inside the 45 yard line of Wyoming before Mark Weston Huff got him down as Joey D. Martino getting ever closer to 1,000 yards. He's at 83 on the day. And that takes him to 995 yards. And off to Joey on the tackle, Jordan Stanton. We'll give him a <laughs> two yard gain on the play, so he's at 997. I don't think he knows, he's coming out of the game. He's checking out. What's he doing? He's checking out. <laughs> if he finds out how close he is, he'll find a way to get back in. Nine hundred ninety seven yards for D Martino second down and eight. There's Natson fumbles the football. Yarbrough picks it up. Now he may be able to get there getting tracked down from behind and brought down a touchdown saving a tackle that time preventing Eddie Yarbrough the defensive end from going in for six Swindell did a nice job of tracking him down. There was a lot of space. Big man was chugging, trying to get there, but a huge mistake right here. You want to cut that ball up inside. Don't try to bounce. And Zotza does a great job of punching it out, number 21. And Yarbrough picks it up. The Grandview High School product. He thinks he has six. Swindoll tracks him down. Second fumble recovery this season for Eddie Yarbrough. First and goal from the six for the Cowboys. A razzle dazzle here and it's got serious trouble written all over it. 
thrown down a, in the backfield. Sam Nick Stratton. Vigil making the tackle. Ooh, Sam Stratton. We tried to run. He's a former quarterback from Chatfield High School in Colorado. They run the double reverse throw. And you see him come around here, and he wants to throw it. And they'll have none of it. Wow. That's that discipline we're talking about. Big time loss, 12 yards on the play. Claiborne, not much there on that throw from Smith. Glover Wright with the coverage. Tell you, he's been lights out. Career high 10 tackles today. He has been lights out in the backfield. A lot of TFLs. I mean, he has been outstanding. Third and goal from the 16. Wayborn in motion. Smith dumping it off. Huron inside the 10, down to the 7. That's a great catch in traffic. I mean, that's how you go up and use your hands, because that was great coverage by Cameron Sanders. And he went up and used his hands with, with being physical and with a lot of pressure. That was a great catch in traffic. He said that's his fourth catch for a total of eight yards. And he picked those eight up right there. Fourth and goal from the eight. Smith. Incomplete. The intended receiver was Gentry. And the Utah State defense holds after the fumble. 9-15 left in the fourth quarter. The Aggies up 35-7 on the Cowboys. Utah State with a 35-7 lead. 9-15 left in the fourth quarter. Good look at a portion of the campus here at Utah State University in <laughs> Logan. Gorgeous setting here. The Bear River Mountains in the background. The inaugural Mountain West Championship game will be played December 7th. For more information, visit www.themwc.com. Utah State, Fresno State. Joey D. Martino, there he is, 1,000 yards and more for Joey D. Martino, brought down by Mark Weston Huff. Congratulations to number 28, the senior out of San Diego, not only to go over 1,000 yards, but he has been dealing with a high ankle issue for the last six to seven weeks and has just battled and pushed and persevered. And really carried this team. I mean, you've got a young freshman in there. You've got to hang your hat on the running game. Between DiMartino and that big offensive line, they've done a nice job of picking up the slack. Last game for Joey of 17 yards, so that would have taken him to 1,014 yards, adding to his total on that play, Xavier Lewis with a stop, freshman out of Aurora, Colorado, getting the start at strong safety today. What a way to finish your, your career, though, to come your college career at home. You've got 1,000 yards rushing. Martino again. Maybe a yard, third down coming up. So on successive runs, Picking up 17, 8, and 1. 1,023 yards. He's smart. He went out, of, went out, of, went out to the sideline. He knows that next carry was going to be a negative yeah. one. You know, so he had to get off the field. Saw some recognition from the fans here with the sign congratulating DiMartino on reaching 1,000 yards rushing. Really took advantage of the opportunity provided when Joe Hill went down with the injury early in the season. Robert Marshall picks up the first down. That was an excellent job of lowering his pads, running behind his pads, and, and really, because there was nothing there, and he ran behind his pads and just drove his way for that first down. Robert, one of the 22 seniors on this Aggie roster. He's out of Dallas. Nice numbers coming in, 309 yards on the ground. 4.2 yards per carry. You know, Matt Wells wants to get as many of his seniors 
on this field today as he can. As Marshall in motion. Garrettson. Now that may have been a little bit of an issue with a distraction for Marshall on that play. Is had a near collision there with one of the guys in stripes. Yeah, the umpire standing right there, and, and it's your job as a quarterback. You could let him clear that area. There was no pressure on Garrettson. He could have allowed him to clear just another yard beyond. But he thought the umpire was about to give him it, give him the, the big shot. Now, one area he's done a nice job today is spreading the wealth. He's got completions to eight different teammates. Oh, a nice good run up the middle by Marshall. Pick up on second down. Mark Anzaccio with the stop, the junior, out of Germany for the Cowboys. Good look, good look at that pad level. I mean, he was so forward, had so much forward lean, ran himself right to the ground, but just explosive as he's able to, to pick up a nice chunk, bring up a third and manageable three yards. They're down in two. And Marshall with the first down. Kevin Harris with a tackle for the Cowboys. Kevin Harris, a senior out of Fountain, Colorado. A good look right there at Robert Marshall. Hopefully had some friends and family able to make the trip up from Dallas to see his final home game. Inside of six minutes left to play here. Up near midfield. Well, 22 seniors recognized for their hard work and contributions to this program. It's been a very nice run for this group. 29 wins. Since 2010, back-to-back -back winning seasons for the first time since the late 70s. Bulls in 2011 and last year. They have a lot to be proud of here in Logan. Well, they've, they've built this thing. I mean, this thing is up and running. This is a sustainable uh, program that, that, you know, is going to make some noise in the Mountain West for future, I mean, in the future. I mean, this is a strong program. Robert Marshall making an impact. On Marquest and Huff that time. You talk about some downhill running. Yeah, you don't see this too often with, with Huff getting the short end of that stick. Williams again. Nice pickup on first down. So many positive things said in terms of the winning. The facilities here, this is a the football offices in that area, meeting rooms. I think about four years old. Right across from that, you've got a terrific a weight facility that opened up this past summer. Recruits are coming here going, we had no idea. And, and that's what Coach Wells says. He yeah. hears from a lot of kids, we didn't know. Yeah. We didn't know. So they, they're they doing an outstanding job here. And it, it takes a lot. It takes this whole community to get involved with that. And they're doing a great job of bringing these kids in and making them welcome and, and helping this program along. Again to Williams. Very nice crowd support today. You've got Thanksgiving break, so a lot of students not around. And we were we were spectacle. I mean, we didn't we didn't know what we were going to see. How many people would show yeah. up? And great crowd, and they're into it, excited. And and I mean, this has a, been a, a great showing for the Aggies. Robert Marshall, six carries for 35 yards, and maybe some hockey after the game for that Aggie fan. Good look there. First down and 10. Inside of four minutes now. Anderson, the tight end in motion. And put the shoulder pads down was Marshall. Jordan Stanton with the tackle for the Cowboys. Two yard gain. Jordan's been, been a steady guy for this team. We've had Lucas Waka in and out of the lineup, Devin Harris in and out of the lineup. I mean, these guys have played through a lot this year, but the one steady Eddie, or the two steady Eddies, I should say, would be Eddie Yarbrough and, mm -hmm. and Jordan Stanton. This will be the 13th play of this drive that's covered 64 yards. 
Williams. Robert Marshall on the carry. That's not three yards in a cloud of dust, but the intent is quite clear. Keep it on the ground. We're doing a very nice job. We're running out the clock inside of three minutes here at Merlin Olson Field, Romney Stadium. Matt Wells, one of the bright young coaches in college football. I mean, when you think about the move from the WAC to the Mountain West, first year head coach, all the adversity they've dealt with, the injuries we've talked about. I mean, it, it, he's really done an exceptional coaching job, and he has to be a strong candidate for coach of the year. He would be mine. I mean, I, he's first guy on my list. Uh, I just, the thing he thinks he's done here, I mean, the, to solidify this program and to take over for Gary and continue what they were doing a year yeah. ago and the year before that. I mean, this program is solid. It's on solid ground. It's got a great staff, great support. Uh, and this guy, I mean, I could sit in his office and talk to him for two, three hours. I yeah. mean, it was very fun sitting around talking to him. So the profile of the program grows. I'm from the Seattle area. You've got Robert Turbin and Bobby Wagner, two former Aggies on a very good Seattle Seahawks team. And that certainly doesn't hurt when you go out to recruit. And you talk about what you got going here. And look, if you've got the talent, you can get from Logan and you can play on Sundays. Williams first down on the fourth down conversion. I'm sure Robert's just going, give me the rock. And keep giving it to me till the clock runs out. He's just physical, running physical. And I mean, this is, this is one of those demoralizing drives at the end of a yeah. game where, where you, you feel as an offense, you look down at Wyoming, they don't, they don't feel like they're going to get the ball again. Well, so you've got the euphoria of what's going on with Matt Wells and his program and a lot of question marks certainly surrounding Wyoming and Dave Christensen in year five. They will not get the sixth win that they had hoped to get for bowl eligibility. Victory formation for Matt Wells' team as they will run the clock out here. And look at Coach Christensen, of course, had the tough decision earlier in this season. Chris Tormey fired his defensive coordinator, Jamar Kane, taking over, elevated from handling just the defensive line. Now the D line and, and the defense in total. Made some changes. Guys responded to him. Well, despite the score, it's not like they had an awful game today. They just did not get any support from the offense, really. Said. No, not at all. Was, the offense, the defense played well. I mean, there's a ton of short fields that were given yeah. to the Aggies when they were struggling. The Aggies were struggling on offense. The turnovers uh, gave them position to get easy points, and it just hurt the Cowboys later on as, as the Aggies got things going offensively. So Matt Wells and the Aggies celebrate in their first season in the Mountain West, the Mountain Division Championship. Well done by this Aggie club that will now advance to a December 7th matchup with Fresno State in the inaugural Mountain West Conference Championship game. Well, what are your initial, real quick, thoughts on that matchup? I, it's, again, Derek Carr. <laughs> again, again, it's another offensive defensive matchup. Yeah. And it tends to not work out well for the offense. The highly touted offenses team tend to get uh, punished a little bit on those kind of matchups. Um, there's a ton of good players defensively for the Aggies. I'm not so sure if offensively the Aggies can do enough to, to handle Carr and, and the Fresno State Bulldogs. But defensively, they're ready to play with. Yeah. Well, they'll have a good game plan together. To try to get enough done on the offensive end. Brett Smith and Matt Wells exchanging congratulations. And there it is, Mountain Division 2013 champions, the Aggies of Utah State. Terrific moment for all the fans here, able to celebrate this moment. Certainly one of the more important ones in program history. You see JoJo Natson, number nine. Of course, two touchdowns today. One, the 64-yard dynamic punt return for the touchdown. 
well, prior special to that talent. One, prior to that one, he was close to breaking another yeah. punt return. I mean, he's did have the turnover. Definitely, definitely a talented kid. There's the Bridgers battle rifle, the new tradition, the first year that that has been up for grabs, and they will etch into that as the banner is unfurled here at Romney Field. Mountain Division champions, the Aggies of Utah State. They'll each year when Wyoming and Utah State get together, they will etch into that rifle, carve into it, the year and the score of the game. So the first one on there forever will be 35 to seven, Utah State over Wyoming. You just feel like how it never, why it never got started earlier, why they never had, even though they weren't in the conference, yeah. they're close enough to have those type of games. Set it down to the field. Tory Holt with a very happy Matt Wells. Well, that's because they are the Mountain Division champions. And congratulations, Coach. It's been a tough year. You, you started three and four this season, and then you went on a five-game tear here. What's been the major difference here in how you've uh, circled the wagons? Just a lot of resiliency from our players. It's the character shines through in tough times. And hats off to these players led by these 22 seniors. I'm just so happy for these kids. Yeah, you talk about the seniors, and they came up with 29 wins in their time here. This is their last home game. Of course, uh, what have they meant to the program? Everything. They've meant everything. They continue to keep this thing on an upward climb. And, and the resiliency, the character of these guys, the toughness, blue collar, I can't say enough about them. Coach, you won the first Bridgers battle. You're looking for the rifle. Have they found it yet? I don't know. We found it, but we got another trophy we're going after next week. Yeah, you got Fresno State coming up uh, in the championship game on December 7th. Uh, your thoughts uh, quickly on that? I, I, I hadn't thought about one. I'm just going to go celebrate with these kids. All right, congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Very happy, Matt Wells, the 2013 Mountain Division champions, guys. Tori, thanks so much. Saw Chucky Keaton in the background. Well, you think about the talent that's on the sideline and their ability to get it done, overcoming all of that adversity. Very impressive stuff. 35-7, the final score. We'll be back to put a bow on this one as the Aggies get it done today.